Okay, what have we got today? Exciting. It's a Bell helicopter. It's an AH-1 AB-47. It's seriously unusual. I really like these kind of 1960s, post-1950s helicopters. They're just really bare and you've got the workings. You've got these weird kind of like trestle construction that it's just very raw and ready to go. Did some research about this and found out these were um, artillery observer helicopters they used in the Vietnam War in the early stages. And they also uh, used them for the infantry as well. Now let's have a look and see what's inside. Well, already the box is um, a classic Italieri style box, good body art on the front, and well, good, good, um, you know, uh, box art, sorry. Uh, it's got the Bell Helicopter Textile Company official license product. So what's really cool is that this is authentic all the way down to the bare bones. So Bell have actually given their kind of blessing in one sense to, um, to produce this kit. And of course, uh, in classic Italieri style, they give you the uh, decals that you can receive. I like this because you can really kind of get an idea of what the kit's going to look like. Look at all the detail. That's going to be quite the uh, challenging build, but a lot of fun, I reckon. If the parts are good looking and they fit, then that's going to be fine. You've got two, two, two versions they've given you as the Italian and the uh, US, but there's also a third option for the British. But for the Vietnam project, I'm going to use the American version. So let's have a look and get inside this. Again, classic Italieri, bit of history in different languages. It gives you the full layout of the pieces and the sprues. Page one, looks at the engine construction, it gives you some guidance. A lot of fiddly details, but again, if they're molded properly, it's going to be easy to build. This is pretty cool. Instrument panel, that's going to be the seating, again, uh, for the pilot. And then you've got the observer, who's got a stick as well. So he's like the kind of reserve, so that's quite neat. You've got the pedals. So it's all nicely kind of, you know, um, put together. I think it's a much look a nicer, neater looking kit than the Huey, if I'm honest. Um, but then again, this could be a new kit as well. I think it is quite relatively new, uh, judging by the box art. Again, some great detail. That's going to be a fun little cab to build. I've got some pilots again, don't forget that I've cast up especially. These are the production miniatures, uh, Huey and Vietnam War helicopter pilots. And so I think these guys would be pretty neat to have in the actual helicopter. So it looks like these two are actually talking to one another. So that's going to be quite cool, I think. Oh, oh he's dying. So that would be fun to have these guys uh, in like a conversation with one another. Um, one in the uh, helicopter, probably looking for Viet Cong units. I'll probably have them flying over like a rice paddy. Um, so that's something that would be quite cool. But yeah, production miniatures will fit like a glove. Salieri, very long instructions, but you can fold them over, which is what I tend to do, so there's two pages each. And then you've got the uh, inside cab, which when it's finished looks good. Really clear instructions as well. And then right there we've got the beginning of the construction, the crazy construction of the superstructure. And it looks complicated, but I think, again, like I said, if the parts are clean, and they are well designed, then they will fit perfectly, so no panicking guys. But that does look pretty uh, extensive. But when it's done, you're going to have a real sense of achievement, I feel. So there's lots of interesting kind of bits and bobs that you can do. Now, um, I think what I might do is have a section where I'm going to paint and build up separately. Um, and then attach separately, like the engine for example, if that can go in there then I'm going to hold off on that. So kind of planning ahead is really useful. Um, but yeah, you've got some pretty cool detail. Now what I'm really excited about is this next page, because check it out, guys. The one thing that's so difficult, I find, is to get hold of mini uh, replica weapons and things that you can use for like just you know, lying around on the scene. What you do is you improvise. So this has got M60 saws. 
It's got 50, 30 cal Brownings. Don't quote me on the guns, I might have gotten that wrong. But it's got some Browning heavy machine guns, two of those which you can cast, as well as um, the uh, staple machine guns that the uh, heavy infantry use, the you know, LMGs they've got, which are the uh, saw. Now you can cast those, and we can use them over and over again. Um, if we want to have door gunners, like for example on a Huey, which would be awesome, or on a gun truck, which is what I'm going to try and do, um, and create gun trucks uh, from very simple M38 uh, transport trucks with a bit of kind of um, plastic card, you know, that's going to be a fun project, and we'll be doing a review of the, uh, the unusual truck that I was able to buy from Amazon. But that is pretty cool, so you've got a full gun rack, and then you've got the uh, assembly of the rotors and also you've got the canopy which is really easy to do very minimal painting which is nice and then you've got the uh, ridiculous weaponry that goes on the side there so that's some pretty heavy firepower two browning machine guns two saws two other browning machine guns there so that's like literally four browning machine guns and two saws it's six guns ready for bear very heavy reconnaissance and also gunship as well so that's uh, the different versions like I said and they look pretty cool, and um, yeah, that kind of concludes. Almost immediately, you could just see from the shine. There's a lot of detail, so these are really well machined. These parts, um, they've probably been put through a centrifuge machine, spun at high speed, so all the plastic gets into all the different orifices. Let's look at the canopy. Yeah, really nice looking canopy. Very clear as well, doesn't look rough at all. Um, just a few little weird bits, but I think it's just the plastic. Yeah, it's the plastic. Very clean, you need to have a clean bubble, especially for one of these um, Bell uh, Soy, is, uh, or Sioux is how they call them. Uh, the AH-1 is just the upgraded version. Let's have a look at the decals, looking really nice. We're gonna use the US Army ones, which are very cool. We've got Army on the side there. And again, if you're doing Korean War, don't forget these helicopters served in the Korean War as medevac and also reconnaissance and gunships. So don't forget, that's uh, something to consider. There's a lot of uh, uses for it. Two sprues. That's literally all we've got. Two sprues. And uh, let's have a look at the detail. Wow. That is very flimsy. Please, please, please use contactor. Um, either uh, Tamiya or uh, Mr. Cement or Plastic Magics because if you use any sort of Ravel contactor you're going to have issues I think because it's going to be too gloopy especially if it's painted so definitely consider contactor uh, that you use but look at these parts I'm surprised none of these got damaged great seating detail like fantastic on. mind you I like the cab Kind of gives you a sense of scale. And again, you know, my pilots are going to fit quite nicely. If we go back to the seats, production miniatures, as far as I'm concerned, they've nailed the pilot. I mean, look at that. That is brilliant. There's no issue. I think he's going to look good. And he's leaning out the side. So this is a recon helicopter after all. So you've got some great detail and great, you know, realism and immersion really effectively and that's what I love I can't stand kits that are just pilotless I'm thinking you know what's the point I get display I understand that but I'm just one of those guys who likes the realism side of things you know capturing a moment in battle but look at this detail this is unbelievable I mean there's a lot to look at and the molding guys I mean this is classic Italiari I mean there's no issues a few little scuff marks things that can be cleaned up but Look at the detail, I mean, the pipes, the hosing, the actual superstructure of the back. Again, like I said, this is going to be a fun one to build. Now, here's my favourite part when I was looking at this kit earlier. Look at all this. These are the machine guns. You can see what I was saying about moulding capabilities. You can cut bits off the sprue. Can you imagine putting these, hanging these off of some string on your helicopter, creating like a gunner hanging out the side. I mean, there's some great ideas that it spawns, it really does. Rotors are nice and long, uh, simple to build. Again, some lots of uh, really detailed parts. This is pretty cool, the instrument panel. 
a lot of uh, hard work going to be painting the dials, but that's going to be a fun job, I reckon, a good paint job. Um, and a lot of tiny little parts, so please, please, please handle these with care, because if they snap off, you're going to spend ages rummaging on the floor. Oh, there we go. See what I mean? <laughs> you're going to spend ages rummaging on the floor. So, I mean, this, this central spine that goes all the way through the back of the helicopter, you've got to be so careful. So, yeah, using super glue, definitely, if you haven't used super glue already, that's something I recommend especially. Um, but that, irony, irony, helicopter going overhead, I love it. Um, that is definitely something that I think is going to be a really cool kit to build. Uh, I'm looking forward to building that. Yeah, it's looking good. So, that, my friends, is a nice complete look at a kit which is going to be challenging. But that, my friends, is the review of the... Bell AH1 AB47. You can do it in Italian, American, or British if you want.